Okay, it was 30. Potzer, we always have a really tight game. I think the last time we played, I fell for that stalemate. I can see it right now. I'm having flashbacks of the last time we played. Now make sure you're muting the stream. Don't you dare be listening in while we are playing. You can always listen back. Um, that's why I have that little timestamp in the bottom right. So you can easily click on the videos tab on Twitch. Let's go, D4. Quit your talking. I could hear it already. Some people are thinking. Quit your talking. Move your pieces. I know. I know how you feel. Okay, Knight F3. Quiet approach. I want to gather some more information. Okay, I'm done gathering. I'm going to go with this. All right. How's that? What do you call this? What opening is this? What does A3 indicate? Anybody know? Who were two um, famous chess players who uh, employed this A3 move? You could discuss that in the Twitch chat. I'm not going to reveal the answer. I could give some hints, though. One starts with a P, the other starts with a K. Okay, let's chop. How will there be a recapture? E4 drops a pawn. Don't you dare do that. Knight takes, bishop takes. So, what's the plan? The plan here is going to be to baby step it. And it may seem a bit foolish to do that because guess who is maybe a bit upset with things? The dark square bishop. But, that's okay. Where does my light square bishop belong? Here seems like a good one. Seeing how this knight could be off the board in a, in a second and h7 is a bit more vulnerable. Um, let's get castled. I'm not sure what else to do. And I have to definitely, definitely, definitely take into account that my opponent is a fast player. And is, is a player who has beaten me many a times. And uh, he will beat me again if I don't move quick. So let's go with e4 now. All right, let's do it now that I have support. Now that I can play it safely without the loss of material. That's always nice, right? Don't want to lose any pawns. A pawn push here. Is that going to be anything exciting? Let's play here. Rook d1, a4, a5. Get my bar my uh, my bark. Where did that come from? My bark. My dark square bishop. How did I fumble with that? Okay, my bishop mo is moving. <laughs> a bishop that moves on a dark square is a bark, I guess. Rook to d1. Uh, this is not good. If I'm already fumbling with my words, those war zones are going to be ridiculous. Okay. Um, I like this. And the primary reason is to engage with this queenside structure with a5. Um, what else might be the reason? To clamp down on b5. And, uh, well, there might be some... No, there wouldn't really be a knight maneuver to b6. That's a bit too far-fetched. So I want to maintain these two pawns right here. And... Um, actually, another thing, I'm just having a flashback of an over-the-board game I had from this position where I was allowed on the black side. This, by the way, is a little bit uh, reminiscent of a Grunfeld, but anyhow, that flashback I had was one where I was able to pivot on f4, and I, I think that that turned out to be a, a good sort, a good thing to do. Uh, so I want to keep my dark square bishop around here, but what is going on with this? A structural change. d5, pass pawn, is c4 going to be played? It might, but I think... What's the scoop here? What's going on? This is a serious, serious move. A critical move. That's what I mean by that. This bishop, what's going on with them? What's going on with this bishop? He's biting at a rock, isn't he? If there's anything, there, this has to be played. I think this might already be a necessity. Can you believe that? That this might be a must move in order for black to get play with their pieces and their queen and the rook? This knight, now that this is a passed pawn, this knight, I think, definitely wants to get here or maybe here. But again, this move is going to have to be played. Otherwise, now or never. 
If you don't play C4, I might be playing C4. And I have a connected pass pawn, and these two pawns, this A4, C4 structure will clamp down on any potential pawn break that black might have in the form of A6 and B5. I could even add an additional um, protector of this B5 square, and my opponent is investing a ton of time, and I don't know what the scoop is. I think this is actually turning out to be one of those boa constrictor-like positions where the more black tries to wriggle out, the more difficult life becomes. Because guess what? With the center now closed, guess where the action will take place? Any guessers on that one? If you guessed on the wings, you're right. I really didn't allow too much time to think on that one, but anyhow, center closed means you should be looking to play on the wings on either the ABC files or FGH files. There is notation on the, uh, the sides of the board if you are uh, super new to the game. Um, so, and these are files, the things that goes up and down, these are ranks, left and right. Anyhow, C4, I think I do that and then think later. Move first, think second, I guess, on this one. Now, maybe this knight is having, getting the bright idea to come to this f4 square. I could always take that into account with g3. And this bishop, what is it doing? He's, gotta, he's definitely got to come back here. I don't see that this move is going to be coming anytime soon. In the meantime, what is my plan? There might actually be something to say with this rook by way of a3 and then swinging over laterally, swinging over along this third rank. Okay, this bishop is uh, going to be coming back here. The knight's going to be playing here. And I'm going to be doing what? Well, sensing that this knight might, might play here, I think I might want to try for these moves. Let's try this. And actually, another thing is I'm allowing for knight to h2, which I think is a very important thing to be uh, taking into account. Actually, now I don't really need to be doing that. Um, Well, what's the scoop here? Um, my light square bishop is a big dummy. Of my two bishops, this is the one that needs more work. So how can you get him doing more work? I'm going to do a move like this. Getting ready to play my bishop to e2, my knight to h2. My knight to h2 definitely in response to bishop c8. This would be a, a pretty annoying pin. Okay, let's come here. Time to, mo time to maneuver. 40 seconds. My opponent is kicking it into the higher gear that I figured they would. Oh, what's going on with the knight? Scary knight moves. Okay. Don't you dare lose this. If anything, you better win on time. <laughs> that's, my, um, that's my plan. At the very least, you better win on time, white. Okay. I want to trade light square bishops, but I'm not seeing that happen anytime soon. Let's play here, I guess. The rook is going to play here and then f5, but... Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait, what's going on? What's going on with this move? I could take. Or can I? <laughs> Okay. I'm going to try and hang on to this guy. Hang on to him. There might be a pawn push, but it's not without weakening h6. What's this queen up to? You got to go somewhere else, queen. She's got to go back home. Okay, and where's my rook belong? Right here. Pressure on this pawn. Pressure on this pawn. Pressure on everything. Ooh. Defend. Knight f1 was another one. I'm going to do that right now. Watching out for this pawn push as well. 23 seconds. See how my opponent's flying? I knew that they would start flying. Oh, this pawn is dead. Or is it? I have it defended now. G6, the knight hangs. Uh-oh. Is this trouble? Dark square bishop's off, and now this pawn is live. He's live. He's ready to rumble here. This pawn's ready to fall, though. <laughs> I know he's not. Let's break at this structure somehow. They don't have any time. Let's chop here. And my rooks need to do something else. They're stupid right here as long as my knight sits there. Aren't they? Could play queen here. Let's do it. Pressure on a rook and a pawn. Oh, I got the pawny. The, qu 
Queen is incredibly active now. This is a tough spot for Team Black. Less than 10 seconds. Let's just come over here. Queen's off soon. Get the ladies off, please. Can we just? I could have taken on C5 as well. Let's just make sure of this. Where's this knight going? Not gonna hurt me, is he? Let's just take here. They'll never suspect that one. There's no time. I could have done anything at that point, but tight game. I figured my opponent would definitely catch up on time. They were down to a minute 30. I had a a big. Uh, Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I had a big uh, lead time-wise, but yeah, good game. Let me go back through this one. Yes, let's definitely go back through this one. Okay, what in the world is the scoop? And by the way, I was not looking at the responses to that hint that I gave out earlier about this A3 move. The two guys behind that A3 move are um, at least the two guys or at least two guys, Petrosian and Kasparov. Okay, we have this. Black is just trying to play with the pieces, have the pieces, um, what I mean by that is have the pieces occupy, well, no, that's, that's actually a bad way to phrase it. The pieces are trying to control the center and not the pawns. If the pawn recaptured, okay, you could say black is controlling the center with the pawn, or at least a pawn is helping control the center. But now it's more just the bishop and the knight that are preventing white from expanding right away in one stroke here, e2 to e4, two pawns side by side in the center. So there's a little bit of a baby step going on with the e3 move, and only later, once it's supported, we have that advance, right? Because I, I was just rattling this off quickly right here if I do it. There's knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, pawn, so let's not do that. And what do we do? So this is the typical strike. You have to be aware of this on the black side. You can't, you have to challenge this center in some way, and that's exactly what my opponent is doing. I think it's safe to say at this point right here, white stands better after this pawn push. I think this is too, too valuable. Now, granted, I did not really put it to fantastic use. My opponent does not have any kingside weaknesses, but... This d5 pawn, in just so many instances, acts as a what? It acts as a great asset in a king and pawn endgame in particular, going stripping the position down to something as simplified as just kings and pawns. That connected pass pawn is uh, it's priceless. Um, and I mean, there's just so many other one, other positions as well. The more and more it becomes simplified, uh, the the more that this uh, pass pawn increases in value. I think. So I, I I think we have to back up here because I don't know about this pawn push. What might be something else though? How about this? How about this? How about instead of? instead of pushing right away, if you're gonna play this move, how about at least allow for the black pieces to be making use of the c5 square? Now, this this idea will come not without allowing your queen to be subjected to an attack maybe by a white rook on the c file, but my point here is to still go with this e5 move, but capture first, cd, cd, after e5, if I'm playing d5, well, guess what? You could be making use of this c5 square. Queen, knight, bishop. Of those three, the knight is probably the one most excited about getting there. So that's just a, a really, I think, a, a simple adjustment to be making. What a world of difference it would make to not have both c pawns on the board, in other words, because that's exactly what happened. If you try to visualize these these next ensuing moves that I'm just going to be voicing, I can't, I can't move them. But it's uh, C takes D, C takes D, or in other words, it's like the C pawns have been removed after those captures. And so if you're able to visualize this position right here without the C pawns on the board, C5 is available for the black pieces. That's my main point, and uh, I think <clears throat> it'd be a much more difficult struggle 
Black was really having to make some defensive moves, I think, over on this king side after the center was closed up. And uh, I guess maybe... I, I, why not actually just play rook here first and then this pawn push? Although maybe I'm getting the, the bishops off in time. So it's kind of tough. And if the light square bishops are off, this knight is going to be liking t this uh, f5 square. It's a great square to begin with, and it's all the more appealing because it's putting pressure on this blockader of the bishop, which isn't the best blockader of this pass pawn, but it's going to have to do. It's better than a queen or a rook. The knight would be the number one guy that you'd want there. But anyhow, um, capture first on d4 here, and only then play that e5 move. All right, let me close. Let's do another one. 